this boy. I know if y'all had proof of me robbing somebody, we wouldn't even be talking. Y'all would have cuffed me, I would be charged with it. That's what I know, bro. In January of 2020, the baby, aka Jonathan Kirk, was supposed to be playing a show at a nightclub in Miami. But when the owner paid him only 20 out of the $30,000 he owed him, things got out of hand fast. The victim alleged that Kirk punched him in the face multiple times before he was attacked by more of Kirk's crew. He was beaten up and knocked to the ground before being robbed for his phone, his credit card, and $80 cash. The only footage of the event was this piece of obscured CCTV footage. Kirk fled the scene in a black SUV before returning to the hotel a few hours later, only to be met by both of the victims and a team of police waiting to arrest him. He was escorted to the police station and told he was only there as part of an investigation. Say, we just gotta do our investigation and that's it. But as it would turn out, the investigation wouldn't be that simple. And unfortunately for the cops, Kirk spent his hour in the interrogation room displaying exactly what to do in this situation and making the cops' lives as difficult as he possibly could. What's your full name? Come on. Immediately, it's obvious that this isn't going to be an easy one for the detectives. Kirk starts off by refusing to answer any of the officer's questions, even just regarding his own name. He's already been read his Miranda rights, informing him that he has the right to remain silent, so it seems as though he's choosing to do just that. Interestingly, however, he is choosing to waive his right to a lawyer, and let's be honest here, it's not because he can't afford it. The best course of action if you're ever put in this scenario is to stay silent and ask for a lawyer. But this time, Kirk is confident that he'll be able to wriggle out of this himself, as long as he chooses his words carefully. An incident occurred at the hotel, 1500 Southwest 1st Avenue that you were there for, correct? What an incident. An incident. You, you had an altercation with somebody? No. You didn't. Did you have a business deal with somebody? No. You didn't? No. So somebody didn't bring you $20,000 in front of the hotel in your SUV? No. Somebody had somebody bring $20,000 that wasn't theirs and lied to them and told them that it was for an event of theirs on the 31st and lied to them. That person, once he realized they were doing bad business, said nah and left for his $20,000. Okay, so you didn't count. And got my contact information to do business the right way. That's what happened. All right, what time was this? Sir? I don't know. Every time they told him. Whatever time, whatever time the camera showed me not robbing no damn body that okay. time. Kirk is claiming that he had nothing to do with anything that happened outside. His story is somewhat unclear, but he's essentially saying that his manager was talking with an event promoter about playing at a nightclub called Cafe Iguana Pines. But it turns out the money that they were offering was stolen, and the promoter was acting strange during the deal. So instead of taking it and going through with it anyway, he told them to get their act together and left without an argument. This, of course, does not explain the altercation outside that was clearly caught on camera, but with the footage unclear and no witnesses nearby to identify the assailants, as long as Kirk sticks to his story, theoretically, things should be perfectly fine. Common sense. You know what I made to even be down here? The promo a promoter booked me at that hotel. I didn't pay to be at the hotel. was paid for. You would have let me on my room, you would have saw close to a quarter billion dollars cash legally hard earned money. I don't got to take nothing from nobody, bro. Well, let me ask you this. Do, do, I will go outside here care? right now and throw $10,000 in the air. Like, I do not care about no money. I don't, bro. Was there an argument? No, it was an argument. I didn't argue with a soul. I didn't argue with a soul. My voice was never was raised. It was never aggressive language for me. None of that. Was there a fight? None of that. No, I ain't seen no fight. Man, nothing was taken. We shouldn't be in no robbery yet, bro. So when y'all get done doing what y'all doing, y'all need to do y'all job. Y'all need to follow y'all process, and y'all need to arrest whoever gave y'all these false allegations, bro. This is bullshit. While it may just look like Kirk is flexing his rapper money here, 
This is actually a very good point for him to bring up in this situation. If he's doing random $30,000 deals on a weekday and paying for hundreds of thousands of people per month, what does he need $80 and an iPhone for? The further he can place himself from this event, both literally and figuratively, the better. From Kirk's point of view, he was nowhere near that crime. He had no reason to commit that crime, and he has sound and reasonable explanation for his whereabouts at the time. However, from the detective's side, a crime was committed, and Kirk's vehicle was right Right there as it happened. So they need to try and extract the information needed to piece his day together to come up with a story that Kirk cannot argue with. That forces him into a confession. When I encountered you in the hotel, you came back to the uh, the concierge, the counter. Yep. Where were you coming from at that point? Prime, Prime whatever, whatever the hell. I went to eat. I went to get you food. Where is that? <laughs> you don't know? No. How'd you get there? In the car. What kind of car? Was it a car you drove? Somebody else drove? <laughs> a Uber. A Uber? Yeah. What kind of car was it? Small car, SUV, truck? What? I don't know. Let's talk about what matters. Let's talk about what matters. Let's talk about what y'all need to get me about this. When I'm driving in the car, what I went to go eat, what time I went, that don't have nothing to do with the fact I ain't robbed a damn show. Me, nobody around me, ain't nobody robbing let's, nobody. Let's, let's take the word robbery out of the picture. So while we here, we taking the word out, robbery out of the picture, y'all too. Y'all are uh, robbery detectives. This is robbery unit. That's, some, the, that's the second word he today. said. That's the second word he said when he came in here. Robbery. Come on, bro. Okay, listen. He told me, he asked a question to me about a robbery when I walked in my hotel. Uh, robbery? I had every answer to the question you needed right there. Whoa, that ain't it. That's false. Okay. I, throw that out the window. We talking about robbery, bro? It's nothing for me to talk about. I didn't rob. So nobody. do you think that we like, we just I woke up this nobody. morning and, and decided to just... I think y'all got a phone call from somebody, from somebody. That, 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 that's already a liar. I know they're a liar. Got a phone call from somebody that's a liar and y'all bought it. Y'all believed it. Y'all got me in here. Y'all put me in here, coach. Brought me outside the hotel and handcuffs, cameras and shit all on me. Come on, bro. This shit is bad for what I got going on. And I ain't even do shit to that man. Even without a lawyer present, Kirk knows exactly what to do. He currently has the upper hand in this interrogation and needs to keep it that way. The cops are searching for anything that puts Kirk at the scene of the crime, but by redirecting the conversation away from that, back to what he thinks is actually important, there's no realistic way that they'll be able to get what they need. But even though he's winning, it's still worth noting how strange it is that he's not asking for a lawyer. Kirk obviously knows exactly what to do in an interrogation and has clearly spent time learning what to do. If that's true, he should also know that there's next to no scenarios where lawyers up will harm his case. But whether it's an ego thing or just a lapse in his thinking, Kirk is definitely still winning this interrogation. But he's about to start absolutely dominating. We talking about criminals. Uh, when, when I do business, it's legally, it's legal, it's legally binded. It's legally binded. Okay. Everything I do, you have to sign a contract. We got to sign a contract. Okay, it's so a contract so right now. The whole incident happened and nothing, nothing went wrong. Nothing, nothing happened. There was no. Not, not to my knowledge. There was no fight. There was no scuffle. There was no. I ain't fight nobody. I ain't fight nobody. But y'all know it's too much. Uh, y'all know too many lies. You get what I'm saying? That's why y'all got to move backwards like that, bro. Like you're saying, you're saying, that they're, you're saying that they're lies, but you don't, you, we don't know what we, what we have. We don't have. Okay. That's I know. What, what, I know. I know if y'all. I know if y'all had proof of me robbing somebody, we wouldn't even be talking. Y'all would have cuffed me. I would be charged with it. That's what I know, bro. That's what I know. Now, while this isn't necessarily true in every case, it is absolutely true here. If you're in an interrogation room and the cops are trying to find out details of the case and accusing you of a crime instead of charging you immediately, it very likely means that they're missing the details needed to charge you. In the vast majority of cases, an interrogation is only done to extract a confession when they don't have enough evidence to easily convict you otherwise. There are a few other niche scenarios, such as trying to figure out why you committed a crime, but it's often very easy to distinguish why exactly you're there based on what you know about the event and what questions they're asking. If the cops know that you're guilty and have irrefutable evidence, cooperation has a lot of merit. But if they can't prove you did what they say you did, stay silent and ask for a lawyer, especially if you're innocent. 
I know your side of the story. My side of the story is I ain't, I ain't done nothing. I don't have a side to the story because I ain't done nothing to nobody. Bro. So that's what I was and, so and before something could happened, be done to me, happened, right? and before something could be done to me, I realized I was dealing with, with uh, uh, bad business. And I Why did you say it was bad business? The, what? Why did you say it was bad business? I already told y'all that you want to rewind this. You don't want it, bro. I already told y'all, bro. My story not going to come out different no matter how many times I said it, bro. It's not, bro. It's right here. So you press stop and rewind and play, I'm going here. Why I said it was bad business, bro. Come on, bro. This man blowing my phone up. I was AI or not. He needed my help for his event. He already was in, in deep water because he's already doing, and I see why, he's already doing bad business. You see what I'm saying? He has an event that wasn't going to go as planned. He needed me to make up for that. He needed me to cover his ass, so he brought in another person, lied to him, swindled him. He thinking he coming to book me for a whole different event, and they tricking him, got him paying me to come do a walk through the night. Come on, bro. He niggas full of shit. As a matter of fact, check them cameras. Y'all got crime scene investigation unit out there, check the cameras. You see him meet up with somebody else in the lobby. Ask him, hey, who is that? Ask him. Follow up on what I'm telling y'all. That's what we're trying I mean, to shit, it, it, I mean, shit, it, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I would expect people to act on common sense anyway. The cops have realized that they're definitely not getting anything out of him for now. He's told his side of the story and made it clear that it won't be changing, no matter what they say. So, as is the protocol here, the detectives decide to leave the room and spend some time outside trying to come up with their next move. This is also often done as it gives the suspect time alone in the room to sit and build up anxiety. In many cases, it can actually be the difference between breaking through a suspect or not. But in this case, Kirk literally just shut his eyes and went to sleep. This dude really does not care. However, it seems as though the detectives couldn't come up with their next step and decided that nothing was going to make this guy budge. The next time a detective returned, it was regarding the security of Kirk's belongings that had been left in his hotel room. Even though he hasn't been convicted yet, he was still the prime suspect of this investigation, so he'd be spending some time in jail while they figured out what to do and gathered all the evidence they could. So they just had to figure out what to do with his stuff while he was locked up. But obviously, Kirk refused to let them touch his stuff and just let the hotel deal with it. Kirk was facing a possible sentence of up to 15 years in prison plus a $10,000 fine, plus any charges they could slap him with for the battery. That's only if they could gather enough evidence, though. Evidence they absolutely were not getting from Kirk, or the blocked security footage that was the only evidence the crime even took place. So just after 48 hours in jail, DeBaby was released and sent on his way. Just two months later, all charges were dropped, and he remained a free man.